This lesson is about friction. We often talk about friction as a negative force that must be overcome, but a world without friction is a dangerous place. Friction is a force that resists the relative motion of solid surfaces against each other. It's a reaction force. This means that without motion, or a net force that could cause motion, there is no friction. It's also a contact force. That means it exists at the location where the two surfaces are in contact with each other. The magnitude of the force of friction is directly proportional to the magnitude of the normal force. The more the surface pushes against the object, the more they sort of stick together. In the video on the left, I am pushing the book horizontally. This means the normal force is simply the weight of the book. There is some friction, but the book slides relatively easily. In the video on the right, I am pushing down on the book in addition to pushing it forward. This greatly increases the normal force, and therefore also greatly increases the friction, making it much harder to slide. We can write that FF is proportional to FN. The force of friction also depends on what the materials are made of. Rougher surfaces tend to have more friction, and smoother surfaces tend to have less friction. This is quantified as the coefficient of friction, which is an experimentally determined value that is the ratio of the friction force and the normal force between two contacting surfaces. The abbreviation for coefficient of friction is the Greek letter mu. Coefficient of friction is a ratio of two forces. So it would be like taking something like 5 newtons and dividing it by 50 newtons, which would give us 0.1, but it would give us 0.1 what? Turns out, coefficient of friction has no units. You can find the coefficients of friction for various pairs of materials by looking at your reference table. You'll see that there are two types of coefficients of friction, kinetic and static. Static friction is the type of friction that exists between two surfaces that are at rest relative to each other. This is the type of friction that makes it difficult to start sliding an object. It's important to note that when you calculate static friction, the value you determine from the equation is the maximum possible static friction. It's not necessarily the amount that's acting on the object at that moment. Kinetic friction is the type of friction that exists between two surfaces that are moving relative to each other. This is the type of friction that either makes it difficult to keep something moving or slows down an object that is already moving. Let's take a look at an example of static friction. What is the maximum force of static friction between a 15 kilogram block of steel on a steel table? We'll start by drawing a free body diagram. We know we have the weight, Fg, and the normal force, Fn. We can calculate that the weight is 147 newtons. This means that the normal force is also 147 newtons. Now we can calculate the friction. We can look up the static coefficient of friction for steel on steel from the reference table to be 0.74. If we multiply that by the normal force, we find that the force of friction is 109 newtons. But remember, this is the maximum friction. If we only exert an applied force of 50 newtons, the static friction as a reaction force is only 50 newtons. If we exert a force of 109 newtons, the reaction force will be 109 newtons. However, if we were to exert an applied force of 110 newtons, the static friction as a reaction force could only be 109 newtons. This would result in a net force that would cause the object to start accelerating, which would then turn into a kinetic friction problem. Now let's look at kinetic friction. If an applied force of 110 newtons is causing a 15 kilogram block of steel to slide across a steel table, what is the acceleration of the block? Again, we'll start with the free body diagram. We know the weight is 147 newtons, the normal force is 147 newtons, and now the applied force is 110 newtons. We can look up the kinetic coefficient of friction for steel on steel from the reference table and calculate that the force of friction is 84 newtons. Now we just have to apply Newton's second law. The net force would be the difference between 110 newtons and 84 newtons which gives us 34 newtons over 15 kilograms for an acceleration of 2.3 meters per second squared. And now a message about surface area from Bobby of Flipping Physics. Friction typically does not depend on surface area. In other words, because these two blocks are equal in mass, even though the top block has a larger contact surface area,
they will have the same force of static friction. This is because pressure, which equals force divided by area, will decrease proportionally as the contact surface area increases and the force of static friction will remain the same. Oh, right, that makes sense. So this one, which has a larger contact surface area, has a smaller pressure, and therefore the force of friction in both cases will be the same. Thanks, Bobby. And now to summarize. Friction is a force that resists the relative motion of solid surfaces against each other. One type is static, which is for an object that is at rest, and the other type is kinetic, which is for an object that is moving. The equation for the force of friction is FF equals mu FN, where mu is the coefficient of friction, which is the ratio of the friction force to the normal force, and it is unitless.